do is before I put the center diffs back in, I'll actually look at replacing the pinion seal. And to do that, we'll need to remove the nut, obviously with a split pin, and remove the flange, and we'll get to it and then we should be able to see it and remove it from there. So I'll be doing that for both of these prior to putting the center diff back in. So that's off. Right, so now we've got to stop that from, from spinning. So I'll see if I can grab a couple of donor, donor bolts for that. See if this will work. Pass load nuts off now. I um, still couldn't take that one out, so I left that one. I'll do it later. I'll focus on this one. And um, oh. so I grab that. It's the only thing about working with gloves, it's a real nuisance at times. There, and now we should be able to slide. This entire unit out. Okay. And we'll give that a nice, good clean up. So it looks like it's a um, slightly different seal. Um, so we'll try to get all this out. I'm going to clean this up first and I'll come back. Right, so According to the manual, it looks like that this flange here is just a press fit. So we're looking at number 30 there. And that's called a mud shield for retainer. And in front of that, or on there, is supposed to be the number 32, which is the actual um, oil seal for pinion. Okay, mud shield. And that's what we're left with. Now I've heard that taking these um, pinion seals are a real downright pain. And I can now vouch for that. It certainly is. What I'm going to try to do is I've carefully put in a screw on the outer seal. It's the old style with the, the metal outer skin there. And I'm going to see if I can leverage it out somehow. And gently... You see how the outer seal is starting to pop just there? So I might have to do the same for the other side. Now you're getting up close and personal into the action here. And I'm just using a crowbar. Turn this around. And we'll make a hole on this opposite side here. Oh, that was much easier having uh, 
pulling from this side. You saw how that's just coming out nicely now. Mm. So now on that side, so basically trying to pull that out evenly. I think that's the trick to this. Yay! There you go. And there's the bearing. And I want to clean all that black gunk from there as well. Carefully not um, getting any of that into the bearing. So I've cleaned up the flange bearing surface and you can see here how there's a scoring across there. It's not that deep but um, I suspect that's probably going to leak sometime in the future. However, I don't have a replacement at the moment so I'm just going to have to put that back in as it is and yes I know what you're thinking why are you doing that but the reality is I'll have to try to reuse that as much as possible for these bits um, so the first thing to do is to replace that and put that seal back in what I'm thinking of doing is putting a smidgen of RTV around the ends just enough to kind of provide a little bit more of a, of a seal and then we'll start putting it together again okay just a smidgen of RTV on the end like I said hardly anything just a just a light coating and now we've got to try to put this in there fairly evenly so I've got to tap that in uh, slowly right, the trick for me was that I actually was able to work it in by hand and get it most of the way in before um, finishing it off with a rubber mallet just got to be careful you don't hit the inner lip which is always interesting when you're trying to do this kind of work all right just applying some grease on that now on the flange Right, so pretty much this little flange here um, it's probably a good idea to take that out so when you're trying to prise the old the old seal out you're not actually going to damage damage this so right almost forgot to put that in now I'm really worried about this raised inner seal section here running along the mud shield here which is going to presumably tear it um, so I'm looking at, at where the mud shield is pressed in and you can see that there's still a little bit of a, little bit of a gap there between, you can see where my finger is, that, that gap there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to tap it, tap it further in to give the uh, shield some distance from that. Failing that, I might have to push the, um, the seal further in until this bit here, the raised section, is flush with the housing. But I'll go with this option first. Okay, interestingly enough, this is where I start experimenting with you guys. Anyway, so I'll wipe that off.
you can see that there's a raised there's a raised section here so I definitely have pushed it in probably that mill you can see there that wasn't there before but I suspect that perhaps um, I'll see whether or not how that sits on on this flange here there so if it sits there on on the edge right, so if that little raised section of the flange sits on here it means that the mud shield's going to miss it problem is I can't quite tell if I'm going to be able to see it properly or not looks like we've got success I don't think that's touching now so that's great 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 all right so one last kind of fit in there and we should be able to Beautiful. Put the washer and the nut back on. And this has got to be torqued. So I have to refer to the manual about the torque settings. And um, the split pin back in and pretty much that's about it now I'm not sure whether or not what I've done there with pushing the mud shield further in to allow for the lipped um, seal well, that, that's good or not if you know otherwise um, please let me know it'll be a bit of a bitch to have to try to do it again but um, certainly going to be better than what it was before which it was leaking so so I'll leave it at that. So next video, I'll start putting these back into the housing. And then once I've done that, we can get on with the uh, prepping and painting.